Hi, this is question number 20 of the set D of JE Mains 2017 paper. And it asks us to find the limit of this term as x tends to pi by 2. So we have to find the limit of this fraction as x tends to pi by 2. Now, note that here we can substitute that x minus pi by 2 is equal to h. So now we are substituting the value of x as pi by 2 plus h. Now when x minus pi by 2 is equal to h, this will now imply that therefore x is equal to pi by 2 plus h. So we've obtained a substitution in which we can now put x can be replaced by pi by 2 plus h. So now note that when x tends to pi by 2, h will tend to 0. So we continue this and write this as limit of our new variable h tending to 0. And in the numerator we have cot of x minus cos of x, which will now x will be replaced by pi by 2 plus h. And so we will replace this x by pi by 2 plus h. So we get the first term as cot of pi by 2 plus h. And the second term is cos of x, which now becomes cos of pi by 2 plus h. And the denominator has pi minus 2 times x, the whole cube. Now because x is equal to pi by 2 plus h, we can now write 2x is equal to pi plus 2h. And so if we want to write pi minus 2 by 3, then, or rather pi minus 2x, then we will take 2x on the right hand side, where we will become minus 2x, and this term will come on the left hand side, that is minus 2h. So we can now replace pi minus 2x by minus twice of h. And so in the denominator we get minus twice of h, the whole cube, which was here. Well, now continuing this solution, we next write cot of pi by 2 plus h is equal to minus tan of h. So this is a formula that cot of 90 plus any angle is equal to minus of tan of that angle. And so we retain the limit as h tends to 0 and then we write cot of 90 plus h as minus tan of h. So here we get a minus tan of h. The next term we get is cos of pi by 2 plus h with a negative sign. So we retain the negative sign and now we focus on cos of pi by 2 plus h. Now we know that cos of pi by 2 plus h is minus sine of h and so we can replace this by minus sine of h. In the denominator now we have minus 2 h the whole cube which now becomes minus 8 h cube. Well, now note that this can further be written as we will retain the limit as h tends to 0 and then we will write tan h as sin h upon cos h. So now we get minus of sin h upon cos h because tan is sin upon cos so we will replace this by this fraction. And then we have a minus into minus which becomes a plus and then we have a sin of h. Now note that we will divide this entire thing by minus 8 h cube as is given so we can write this as minus 8 into h cube. Well, when you further solve this, you get, we will retain the limit of course as h tending to 0. And then we will write this, we will take sin h out of this bracket and so we can now write sin h out of this bracket. And now what remains inside this bracket is in the numerator 1 upon cos of h plus 1. Now here there is a minus sign which will be retained. And if you look at the denominator, in the denominator we have minus of 8 into h cube. Now h cube can be written as h into h square. So we write a h here to go with the sign of h. And the remaining terms are minus 8 h square. So h cube has been split into h and h square. And now these two terms can be split into two different limits. And so we can take this term first and write limit of the function sin h upon h as the variable h tends to 0. This becomes the first limit and this fraction will come under the second limit. And so we will again write limit as h tends to 0 of the second term. Now, the second term can be rewritten by, by multiplying both terms by minus 1. So minus 8h square becomes plus 8h square. So minus 8h square will now become plus of 8h square. Likewise, this term in the numerator will also change its sign. So we will now get 1 by cos of h minus 1. So we have multiplied this entire fraction by minus 1 in the numerator and denominator, so the value is unchanged. Now this first limit reduces to 1, so here we get a 1. And the second limit, which now becomes interesting, is 1 minus cos of h upon cos of h. So I can retain the limit sign, then write h tends to 0. And then I can write inside 1 minus cos of h upon cos of h, which comes in the denominator. So here I get a cos of h, and then I have the multiplier h 8h square as there was before. So I have now written this limit in this form. 
Well, this one can be neglected because it's a multiplier and so we can just calculate this limit. Now, note that cos of h can be taken out and so we can now write this limit as limit as h tends to 0 of 1 by cos of h. So I've now taken this cos of h out and so I get here a cos of h in the denominator. And the remaining terms, when I take this term out, the remaining terms are 1 minus cos of h upon 8h square. So that will be retained under the limit sign. So I will retain h tending to 0. And then I will write 1 minus cos of h upon 8 times h square. Now, this first limit can be, this first limit can be found by direct substitution because cos of 0 is equal to 1. And so this limit reduces to 1. And so we get a 1 here. And what is left in this bracket is, cos, or rather 1 minus cos of h upon 8h square. Now, 1 by 8 can be taken out, and so we get a 1 by 8 out. And what remains now is limit as h tends to 0 of 1 minus cos of h by h square. Well, now we have a ready-made formula for limits of this kind, that is 1 minus cos of h upon h square, when h tends to 0 is equal to half. And so this answer reduces to 1 by 8 will be retained and the second limit, limit of 1 minus cos h upon h square as h tends to 0 is equal to half. And so this limit can be replaced by half. Or rather, the value of this limit is half. And so the final answer that we get is equal to minus 1, or rather, plus 1 by 16. And so the final answer to this question is that limit of this entire function as h or x tends to pi by 2 is equal to 1 upon 16. And so we can report the final answer as limit of this entire function as x tends to pi by 2 is also equal to 1 by 16. And so this is our answer that we will mark. And note that in the set D, this is the second alternative. And so the right choice is the second alternative whose limit is obtained as 1 by 16.